I have to take you around everywhere I go, spreading the faith. <laughs> We're talking about pattern language here. It's actually called a pattern language. It isn't the pattern language because they believe that this is just a, a template. It's not the, the full truth. And um, Robert, um, Your brother. my brother here, was and I were talking about different needs of um, our homes and why do we have homes and why are they so big and why are our bathrooms so big and what are we afraid of? Does that mean we're afraid because we have big bathrooms? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Could be. I'll take that house across the street the sun's setting up. That has a roof that looks like it was just dropped on top of a box and it doesn't have very much interest to it. But maybe the need there isn't... Hopefully they won't design. see this when I post it on YouTube. Yeah. But maybe the, the need there is to have a place to hide, to be safe. Now my father's house was built here in 1900. It was a farmhouse. Arlene said there. it wasn't a farmhouse. She, no, she got wrong. upset. <laughs> she's yeah, she's I mean, a farm, farmer's daughter. This has been added on and, and No, I don't built. think she is. In, in Pennsylvania, it's an honorable thing to live in a farmhouse. Nobody, yeah. well, the old houses had a farm. Yeah. You know, you had to have the animals. There's a picture of this in the living room. It looks pretty... Uh, like there were animals around? And yeah, it's, there's no other houses. Um, it's very... Uh, there's a lot of green space, which is now... It uh, brings up another point, you know, that our father wanted to build onto this house, but the city of Piedmont won't let you because there's no more green space left. And as you can see back here, he's bricked it all and there's no soil. It's just a green lawn, which is a terrible thing for the environment because it uses so much water. So there's a lot of lessons, but I think it boils down to the population always. You're just You can get away with this when you have lots of water, but we don't have lots of water because we have lots of people. So we should drink lots of beer. <laughs> what do you think of that, Bob? Well, I kind of believe in generic beers and not these designer microbrewery expensive type or no I mean a pattern a lot language. of so-called imported beers in fact not even imported there no I mean I mean the, the, like the, if Heineken Beck's it's actually bottled in San Jose you want to talk about using beer? the same water from the Sierras not out of a melted glacier but <laughs> brings me to the saying? point well, this problem with global warming and the melting ice, in fact, is... Yeah, but there's volcanoes under them. That's no, why well, they're melting. That, but it's the uh, companies that bottle water. They say the water comes from glaciers, and they're melting the glaciers with blowtorches, putting it in plastic bottles. <laughs> By the time people drink this water, it's so got you're a lot of Budweiser is really plastic water, it's not beer. impurities. Yes, of course. I mean, beer, Coca-Cola, it's 98% water. Are they saying that? That they as, get glacier as water? As your human blood is 90% water, probably yeah. 95%. No, 70%, water. I think. No, much oh, I say 62.3. Oh, the whole body. Or was it 48.6? I don't know. No, I think it's The whole body is 70%, but yeah. it's 70 something like the blood and definitely spit. The spit is probably 99% water. So when you're spitting on someone, you're actually helping yeah. them. <laughs> of course, you know, there is a loogie content to it. But. <laughs> This is the but what do you think about down. that book? But of course, loogies are another subject. You have your clam, your Boston, your South American bolo loogie. <laughs> All we have is our shadows right there. What can we do with our shadows? The shadow are we knows. living in shadows? Oh, look at right. Paul's hair. Right. <laughs> it looks like a carrot. <laughs> 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 Oh, that's a rabbit, yeah. In the yoga posture, you have to get your hands to seal off all the light between your head and your arms. You don't want any of this action going. But so what do you think about the book, Bob? You didn't answer. It's bullshit. It'll never become a bestseller. This was from UC Berkeley, where Yanch came from. Oh, yes. The 
because that used that city planning had the best I department. Remember. You know that that was the most hope. What was that guy you had in high school that taught you about meditation? He didn't teach you meditation. Mm -hmm. Sistarki? Yeah, Mr. Sistarik. Sistarik. <coughs> what would he, he have thought about this? That it's systemic. <laughs> systemic. To the indigenous people. <laughs> Why do those people are dead now? Because they couldn't live. Sad he died, Mr. DeSoto, too. God, Mr. DeSoto. And. Of course. It's a good thing we have Marada this year. This year, you can. That's the flower that makes it thick? Yeah. And we boiled it down. Which, <laughs> which you weren't so sure of. <laughs> which you weren't so sure we needed. Oh, but wow. No, I thought we needed it. We didn't need it. We didn't need it the way he was boiling it. I mean, he was good. He wanted it. was going to be too thick. Okay. Can't have that on the side. That was, that so, was cooking. So, Ian, did it look like this for you? Or did it look like soup? Was it like soup? Mm -hmm. Say hello to Ian, Daddy. See, it's Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yes. let's all eat now. God bless the country. I'll give you the new one to look at. <laughs> yeah. no, but it, no, but what's nice is it shows how but much Paula, it's been used. But Paula, saw the books, the cookbooks we have first. Uh, no, that's not. And, and they were saying, yeah. And the only book we really use most is this. We use that one a lot. Yeah. Why did you say sure? This we we own it about forty forty about forty, 40 years. years. Oh, oh really? Oh, oh. Take a picture yeah. of this. Oh boy. Oh. Thank you for the camera referring to public. Said show her talking to Paul. <clears throat> okay. I don't think anybody really cares. Stop that. No, we're gonna put those in the dishwasher. We're not gonna do those. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here I am with my happy family in California. Something that we cannot yeah. scientifically test. Thank goodness, because the weapon systems are so new in terms uh, of their potential. But Harold, that's actually why why I'm talking to you because it's not new. Uh, there's a whole, huge business attached to it, and there are mobile devices around, uh, which can be traced back to at least 40 companies, and I have a list of 100 already which are involved. So that the issue is not new. You just Google directed energy weapon and Lockheed, you will find the the brand of Lockheed. You Google the same word as Raytheon, you find the pre 9/11 line. You go to Boeing, you will find out that Boeing is actually the leading contractor of future combat system, which is a kind of militarized Google Earth which integrates the direct energy weapons. Well, this would be, uh, uh, the way I try to look at things is in terms of patterns. Okay. Uh, between things that exist. And I know we have out of uh, the more or less recent history, the whole um, issues that are around the thermonuclear weapons capability that exist in a new kind of pattern. So there are other new weapon systems that are being developed that have destructive capability. And the, the pattern, one would ask, is have we reached a point where if, in a spasm of hatred, very worried about the gearing up toward bombing Iran and whatnot now, it seems to be, that if for some unforeseen circumstance, a black swan, as uh, oh, Kelly swan. talks about now and something unexpected, these weapon systems were to be, as they have been throughout human history, unleashed in a spasm of vengeful hatred and so forth. Is it possible we've reached a point now, whether it's uh, your new system, the, the systems you're talking about, Lockheed and so forth, or the traditional weapon systems that exist, thermonuclear and so forth, is it possible, and it had, can only be modeled, 
that the destructive capability is such that if it were to happen, would it mean, or could it possibly mean, that it would be destructive of the entire Homo sapiens species? Have we crossed that line? And if we did, when did we? And it's all measured in terms of potentiality, uh, something that cannot be tested. Uh, but that's a question that I'm very interested in. I think we crossed that line after 200,000 years of human existence around the year 1970. And there are nuanced new ways in which systems can be used to intimidate and exercise power and so forth. But that's a pattern that I'm interested in. I'm not sure how the weapon systems you're talking about fit into the, or are added to, the storehouse of capability for us to collectively commit species lethal. Um, well, uh, uh, Harold, Annihilate maybe, the species. Maybe, maybe uh, Harold, that's exactly why people uh, have to look into future combat system first because future combat system is actually uh, a radical uh, transition uh, application to create man-machine concepts. Man-machine concept is the merger between human mankind and the machine which is much more radical than sit in front of the internet and doing some nice stuff uh, and it's, uh, it, 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 it's far beyond having an uh, electronic uh, uh, leg. Yeah. Uh, so man-machine concept means you create any kind of competing man-machine concepts like you're creating different nations or different religions. So what they're doing already uh, since years is working on competing man-machine concepts to create the war for the future. And this is why it's so important, uh, uh, well I cannot only say for my temper to oppose the anti-war movement because they completely failed uh, look into this. They have no clue that we have actually uh, dozens of direct energy types. They don't know what the future combat system actually is. Uh, they're oppressing the whole Nine of Truths movement, which is itself already a cult. So you see how much time the perps already won over the last three, four years. Let it me ask you a question. Are you optim? Uh, I, I tend to focus myself, and we're all part of the Vedics have been telling us it's all one seamless web, the system the consciousness, the evolution of consciousness itself. Are you optimistic? Well, I'm optimistic if people maybe like you would radically uh, change their focus and say, yes, I want to, I want to inform the people of future common systems. Yes. yes, I can tell you names of 40 companies which received contracts before and on deck energy weapons. Yes, these weapons are more dangerous than nuclear and conventional weapons ever before. Yes, it is possibly uh, negative to talk like this, but there's positivity in it if we explain to people that the uh, perps want to get rid of human mankind and replace them with, with uh, a bionic species. Oh, hey, hang on, hang on, Harold, before you answer that, I just want to get Nico up to speed because he's not as familiar with your work. Um, Harold has often said that 9-11 truth is not radical enough. I just want you to say it's not that he's not radical, it's that it's a matter of, you know, whenever I used to tell you, Harold, that I wanted to work more on what was inspiring you to hang in for decades, and you really have the world's longest running public access show. So that's well, I wouldn't say Reagan, I would just say they're not smart enough. They, What's that? Well, they're just not smart enough. They already co-opted about their own uh, oh, you lack mean the, of you IQ. Mean, uh, excuse me, you mean the anti-war movement? Is that what you're talking about? Who's, who's not smart I'm more, I'm more pragmatic. You said now I'm true. Maybe we're talking about the anti-war movement. No, no, no. No, Harold, Harold was saying, because when Webster comes on his show, people who want to listen to Webster say that Harold's interrupting. But in truth, if you listen to it, Harold is not interrupting that much. It's just they're, they're not connecting. And, and Harold and, and Webster doesn't think that Buckminster Fuller is very, uh, he, he can never understand why he was so popular. Oh, I That's know about all. the interrupting thing. Interruption is actually sometimes not rude, but you try to pick up a train of thought where you think you have something in common and try to simplify it. Right. That's what I always describe as cognitive ah. agents. You know, Harold, the thing why they create the internet is just to actually get people together who have a little bit more intelligence uh, on their mind and then to control them. Uh, that's the whole issue with uh, why, why, why do people start with nicknames on the internet? Well, it's because they have to hide something. So, and people who hide something have secrets 
which the establishment uh, 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 define what is actually a secret. So the secret societies are actually uh, is nothing but nothing. It's like oh, two people conspire about a secret, and the and the real irony is that they don't have any secrets. It's just that the <laughs> idea of the secret itself is already a cult. If I tell you I cheated on my uh, my girlfriend. And, and I tell you, don't tell anyone, this is how you create a cult. It's like after the end, you have the anonymous alcoholics, you have the anonymous <laughs> cheaters, you have the porn movie. What? Yeah, that's, just, that's how Harold, society do you know starts. we have the distinction of being two people at least that use our names on the internet. I'm Paula Gloria, that's my first name, my middle name, and, and you're Harold Channer. Yeah, uh, and, and the thing is that it, it seems to me back again to the idea of patterns, and how large a context of understanding one can try to encompass in terms of getting patterns. And it seems to me we're at a time of qualitative transformation in the evolution of universal consciousness, perhaps. And if we take on the one side a pattern that, whether it's uh, comet systems or new technologies that have been um, added on to the destructive capability of war making, uh, which comes out of history, and it's been like that, what would be, if, if we're at that point, that's an existential new reality in the evolution of consciousness. And that's a negative. If you're saying we have the ability to unleash systems that it's not just wiping out the tribe in the other village or the other nation or something, it's wiping out the whole hominoid line of which I have a kind of a strong commitment to and so forth. And what would be the positive side of the technological development? It's all technology is all an extension of consciousness into the environment whereby one can make the world different than in an Eden-like sense is the context which most creatures confront the environment and which we did when we were wandering around on the Serengeti Plain. We've now reached a point where, um, you know, we've got the ability to destroy the hominoid line, minimally, perhaps more. And what would be the positive side, possibly, of, um, of, the, of the developments? And one is, I postulate, Mr. Fuller has, Murray Bookchin, some others have, that we have, perhaps, and it's hard for people to encompass because all of our institutional assumptions we've inherited are perhaps to be subsumed within another understanding. And the major premise would be, it may be possible for us to see, through modeling and so forth, that we actually have transcended scarcity, material scarcity, in terms of the entire system by which this spaceship and this planet system and this um, syntropic, um, anti-entropic function in universe is there, and that if we have done that, that is a major positively seen liberating potentiality that is the promise of the technology. And it's sort of odd to me that that possible uh, projection or modeling is never mentioned ever in terms of the political context which within all the enemy systems are done and that if you do get to a point where you transcended scarcity, there's the potential for setting up a context wherein, rather than zero-sum political fighting and so forth, as has been the history of humanity, we may have a new capability for what could roughly be seen as liberation and perhaps achieving a level of consciousness that is transcendent and that we're going to come into a new relationship to universe in a speciation sense. All right, but Harold, um, I'm coming from a, actually from a party level and... <clears throat> What's a party level mean? The party level is actually that you try to explain things very simple. I mean, uh, what we're risking here right now is the usual PBS phenomena. That's, that's actually you driveling around philosophical uh, complexity and at the end the user just says, oh, it was a nice interesting talk and then they have their own response of philosophical drivel. But, you know, <laughs> uh, a party guy goes to a party and picks up the chick or not. He drinks a beer and gets <laughs> drunk or late or not. So whether we can analyze this in a philosophical way or not, the facts are on the table, Harold. It doesn't make it more uh, interesting to just driveling around. I could drivel a whole day 
about how Emmanuel Kant plays and all this and then uh, can freak out on Jim Fetzer again because he never speaks of politics against Stephen Jones. Uh, sorry to say that, but the facts are out there. The you know, you energy know. weapons do exist. So you're taking a political stance. Yes, and I make this political, political stance very no, no, simple. The no. anti-war movement is infiltrated at the top. They're not speaking out. They have the knowledge to figure out what we figure out and they don't do it. It's a clear fact for me that the anti-war movement is an infiltrated species itself at the top and it has to be opposed if we ever have a chance. Whether we're doing it in a nice or aggressive way is not my problem anymore. I know that Leslie Kagan knows exactly the damn thing we also know. I even was... You mean about directed energy weapons? She must know. I mean, the, these people are not stupid. I mean, they're doing research. They that, have a huge why... staff for working for her. It must be someone who's telling it, no, that's not the issue. Your issue is bring the troops home, and that's a limited hangout issue. And if these people continue with that, yes, they belong to jail. Yes, you need negative language to speak out that these people are sick. Sick as the same people who create the war are the anti-war movement who are now telling us what we have to think about 9-11. We are censoring six years. Sorry, I'm saying no to Cindy Sheen. I'm saying no to Cynthia McKinney. I'm saying no to all these anti-war people who are now using a setup on Webster Tarpley uh, to divert again the, the stupid silliness of the anti-war movement. And if you carefully analyze how it all works, yes, it's the own damn but, fault but of the Ovalian Nam Trusing. Webster Tarpley set out himself. I tried even to explain why I'm setting up himself. No one wants to listen to how simple setups uh, are created. It was Kevin Barrett who right, right. that, May that's was setting up. And so forth. It's not where I'm coming from. That's interesting. There's a lot of variety and so forth. Who are you saying yes to? I, I'm saying yes to no leader. Yes to no leader. Leaders, I'm saying right, yes okay. to the facts. Okay. Yes to the facts. The fact is the Nine Truths movement is infiltrated by people at the top who are linked to actually weapon industry. They're linked to cultists who want to divert the people about mind operations. They're completely but limited hangout because they're delaying always the most important smoking guns. They're denying the TV fake reach is a fact. They're denying that, that the towers couldn't do you, do have come down with thermite. I mean, these are very simple facts. And, and now uh, in the uh, underground radio, uh, 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 the underground radio on the internet actually were a little bit smarter, know exactly how stupid how misled this movement is, so they know actually uh, the same things like me, but they, it, it is designed like the same way, oh, they're tracing back to some persons, it must be still is this info. They never look into the facts, because it's already poisoned over the people who found out first. You see how we, we're setting up, uh, how they, the perp setting us up, uh, it's, very, it's very simple. Okay, well, I, 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 I just see it as the, the, I see that as the most important question confronting us, whether there is this alternative reality. It's in the ontology, it's in the existence, and it's all invisible. It's not seen. But the question is, if we have transcended scarcity... It is seen. Listen, again. Google is like a, another man machine concept. If you if, we, if, if you Google a keyword, you get the same results no matter what you're doing. Yeah, but listen. So if you if Google direct energy weapons, you get the same facts. I'm fine. Right. It provides alternatives to a context where you can subsume the inherited institutions within a context that will be able, in the end, to include those who are responsible for the outdated, historically inherited institutions and assumptions. And it seems to me that's something worthy of considering because you could have an operating system that would have, in the end, no enemies. But Harold, I think what the exciting part of this is, it's not just a consideration, it's an application. And that's what excites me. When I went down to Panama City, and worked with Molly's father and his friends at the Capstone Society, I was talking about zero-point energy, yeah. and I didn't really fathom that there are actually devices out there. There's many inventors out there that know how to create energy seemingly, seemingly out of nothing. But, let, you know, we would say out of nothing in that you don't have to depend on oil. And, and the whole ecological movement to talk about renewable resources and things like that becomes a diversion for this also. So I can, well, what, what, excites, what, what, what excites me is both Nico and you 
were questioning something that was relatively satisfying to me, and that's Webster Tarpley's work. And when I went back and listened, because when I post things, I follow the comments. And people said you were interrupting Webster, but the truth was you weren't. The only thing was is the, the times that you interjected, it wasn't, you weren't following or what he was saying. But, you know, as time runs on, I can see what you were trying to say. And the same thing with uh, Christine Ebersole. Because one viewer has, has sort of commented that you weren't on the same page there. They didn't use those words. That's my words. And I'm feeling that the new media could, could help to create more harmony with diverse opinions. Because you need these diverse opinions. Yeah, my, my, my sense of what's really radical, okay. uh, beyond the dialectic of uh, one system and the, the identifying the evil people evil and that sort of thing being overcome by the forces of good or something is that you're going to the really radical challenge is to prevent an alternative that is so comprehensively appropriate to the evolution of a liberated human consciousness and its evolution that it would be able to be inclusive of everybody not enemies who transcended a condition out of history. James Joyce said, history is a nightmare from which I'm attempting to awaken. Mm. That's my way of thinking. Well, and since but we have a have digital a age, there's not even real uh, history uh, reflection It's anymore. idealistic sounding and so forth, but I think that's the pathway it, so that you could present an alternative to those responsible for the historically well, inherited institutions Harold, in Harold, which his, we're all in ca historians, captured. Historians are the biggest Able to be, in the end, Nico, able to, it will be able to subsume the outdated institutions, mm. provide an alternative for what Fuller would have called an operating manual for Spaceship Earth, and that you present that alternative that, that subsumes, doesn't overthrow, subsumes, and respects the existence of people responsible for historically institutions, but realize they're not the leaders. Uh, the leaders of it, they are a please. lagging indicator in market terms. They will be the last. But that's a context that I think is ultimately the most radical. I think actually historians are the biggest hoaxers. Of action and directed against the evildoers. Right. Because I think that's heading for disaster. And disaster now is on a much larger template than ever it has been. And that, I think, is where the ultimate question is. It's a matter of design and taking the measure of the invisible ontology or the new ontology right, or the new zeitgeist uh, 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 opportunities for a positive thing of liberating all of humanity.